Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We're joined by our second guest. I'm particularly excited about this conversation because I know that everybody wants to have popping skin and catch the golden rays of the sun just before it sets and post the best selfies. But you need to look at your skin from what you take inside onto the treatments as well that you handle on the outside. Today we're joined by medical esthetician. His name is Samuel Joseph and he is the lead medical esthetician at the Aesthetic Clinic Lagos and also the esthetician of several A-list actors celebrities and lots of the forever young socialites it's a good it's good to have you before i say it's a good thing to have you. it's good to have you samuel hello good evening good evening how are you i'm fine first of all your skin you. is popping and we see your skin you know you're on, on instagram so it's not really like a lighting it's in real life and it's popping like this what would you say are you know every, everybody wants great skin but mm -hmm. some, of, some of the time we're not willing to put in the work let's mm -hmm. start with the role of diet and the things that we're taking to, you know, how, how does what we take into our body affect our skin? Yeah, generally you have to be healthy to have healthy skin. I mean, if you're not healthy, it definitely tells on your skin. So people who eat anyhow, um, it definitely tells on their skin. So generally you need the vitamin and it's not just about what you're putting on your skin. It's also about what you're taking in. So you need to take enough water, be hydrated. No matter the amount of moisturizers you put on your skin, if you're not taking in enough moisture you still be dehydrated so i mean you need to you know eat well diet is very important i just got to my soul <laughs> that, that, you know, dehydration because some of us can stay without drinking water yes i mean we time. don't have that water um habits most people don't have that. i mean we're getting it now but before now taking water is not something that people think it's important just probably when you're eating but at least you take like two liters a day yeah for two good liters. skin yeah well, we'll get there. <laughs> Let, you know, let's talk about the what is the necessary routine. We hear different things that they say, oh, every day, the things you should do to your skin, you should moisturize, you should use sunscreen, you should use this, you should use that. What should be the normal routine every day for the care of the skin? Um, first of all, you should know that this skincare thing is, um, can be elaborate and can be very minimalistic. Okay, so for people who really want minimalistic um, skincare, um, basically for who are not looking for something dramatic, uh, I think the most important thing to use is a sunscreen. That is number one. So if you, if you, ask, if you ask me what should a normal routine be in the morning, wash your face and put on sunscreen. All right, and sunscreen... Uh, what's the how do you check what kind of sunscreen let's not call brands but spf what yes yes basically the minimum is spf 30 you can use as well as up to 50 so, some brands have 100 and 130 but generally the truth of the matter is anything above 50 is just doesn't give you as it's not giving an additional protection basically because at spf 50 we are blocking at about 98 a percent of rays with SPF 50. So I think once you are using SPF 50, you're, you're fine. All right. So for those who want to go all out and, you know, do the full skincare yes. routine, what exactly <laughs> should so you So for do? those who want to go all out, first of all, that's where there's a problem, when people want to go all out. Okay. So when you want to go all out, that's where you need an expert. That's where an expert actually comes in. So there should be a plan for you. So what is your goal? What do you want to look like in the next five years, next 10 years? What are your problems? What is your skin type? What are the conditions you have? How does your mother look? Because you may look like that in the next 10 years, yes. So what things are in your genetic uh, makeup? Um, your family, are you melasma prone? Are you acne prone? Because most of these things actually have to do with our genes. That's why, we, that's why you see some people who are 50 and they look amazing and they tell you, oh, I rub shea butter and I drink coconut oil. You don't drink coconut oil. <laughs> <laughs> but some people use yeah, coconut oil. Yeah, some people, anyway. I mean, some people, I mean, that, do you, you hear all sorts of things. Tomato juice, I take that every morning. And carrot you try water. it and carrot water, carrot oil, <laughs> all sorts of, you know, crazy things. But basically, those people have amazing genes. Okay, so, I mean, those are the things that we consider. So, for some people, they are acne prone. So, you know, there are some things you can't use. You can't use a scrub. You can't really use a scrub if you're acne prone. You can really? use some, yes, you can use some scrubs, but we prefer if you don't use scrub because the more scrubs you use, the more irritations you get. I it, would never have known this. I would yeah. think that, you know, the more acne, the more scrubs you should oh, use. No, that's, that's, that's what I would naturally for think. For acne prone 
skin. We prefer gentle exfoliants, more like chemical exfoliants. Uh, and by chemical exfoliants, I don't really mean chemical, like, like acid you pour on people to yeah. kill them. <laughs> Basically, some of these chemicals are extracted from fruits, uh, synthesized, and, you know, made to be fit for your skin. So, yeah, for acne-prone skin, we prefer, you know, gentle things that will take easy, that would go on easily. Now, if you're really dry, you can do some nice scrubs, you know. People, I find that people love to scrub around here. So <laughs> <laughs> you can scrub, but I mean, that's, that's something you should be... So what of those that have like of. combination skin, maybe parts of their body is oily, parts of their body is dry, maybe they have oily face, dry skin, or dry face, oily skin, you know, for those who have combination skin, what would you say would be the best? Combination is generally not, it's actually not a mixture of oily face, dry skin. Oh, really? It's basically some oily parts, parts of, of the, the face, face and okay. some dry parts of the face. Now that boils down to your genes again. Now, oily skin, if you're oily, if you have oily skin, you can't switch from being oily to become dry tomorrow, except if you're doing something rather harsh. Do you get? So, um, basically, you can't change your skin from being oily to becoming dry. So, it's just to manage it. You have to learn how to manage it. And that's where your skincare routine comes into play. So, um, products for combination skin, you're basically looking out for things that are not so drying, because the more you dry out your skin, the more oily it becomes. The more you dry out your skin. You know, people think if you have oil, you should use harsh products that will dry them out. No. If you dry it out, um, you're going to, you know, lose, you're going to tell your body to produce more oil. So the oil you see in your face is what we call sebum. So your skin cannot produce water to nourish itself. It basically produces that sebum. So if you dry out your skin, what will happen is your body compensates for that dryness by producing se more sebum. So it gets more oily. So typically, the trick we usually do is to give more moisture, all right? So when you use probably like a drying product, you put more moisture. You're well moisturized and well hydrated. So a moisturizer is not, does not actually pro provide moisture. It basically locks in moisture. Aha. So that's the trick for combination skin. Interesting. What would you say are some of the most common complaints that people come to you? I'm sure you see tons and tons of people. I mean, I see all the celebrities on your page. So <laughs> what would you say are some of the most common complaints people come to you with? I'm sure acne is one of them. Yeah, acne is one of them. But the most prevalent problem that we have with black skin is hyperpigmentation. I mean, it's the most prevalent problem. And, um, you know, it's, you can't really do anything about it. I mean, it can be, it can be treated, obviously. But... Does that mean that you won't ever get hyperpigmented again? No. So hyperpigmentation is, you know, discoloration of parts. Yes, of discoloration. Body. Basically, so this is what happens. So melanin is an amazing component of our skin, but um, it can be good, it can be bad. So it's not actually bad, but hyperpigmentation is your body's own method of protecting itself from the harmful rays, rays from the sun. That's basically what hyperpigmentation is. But then it poses um, a problem to the person who has the hyperpigmentation because it's sort of like um, your skin gets discolored. Now, the discoloration, will it cause any damage to you? No. Will it kill you? No. Will you? Nothing will happen to you. You'll just be worried that your skin is not. But is your body trying to protect itself? Now, I tell people the most important way to avoid hyperpigmentation is sun. Avoiding the sun, reducing how long it's out in the sun. Even if you're going to stay in the sun, make sure you wear sunscreen, use protective clothes, wear hats, wear goggles, or whatever. You know, <laughs> yes, protect yeah, yourself so from I, the sun. At the end of the day, the goggles, the, glass, the glasses, the hats, the sunscreen yes, are very important. They are to very important to sun. protect you from. And again, people forget we're not actually asking you to protect yourself from the sun because the sun is bad. But generally, the sun um, is not prevalent here amongst black and white, but the sun is the primary cause of skin cancer. Last month was Skin Cancer Awareness Month, and we actually talked about it, you know, educated people about it. But the sun generally causes skin cancer, but that's more in Caucasians than in blacks because we have the melanin. Yes, yeah. and for those who produce melanin less, then they need to um, apply more sunscreen. You know, does, does that work? Or does it work that way? If you uh, maybe your skin produces ma less melanin, you, you apply nobody more actually sunscreen. produces. I think the melanin count is probably the same. I mean, the melanin size are probably the same, but the melanin count is sort of different. But um, the thing is, 
it's not about applying more sunscreen, it's about applying the right amounts. So you're applying, applying to your face, neck, ears, back of the, like one teaspoon. I once heard that sunscreen should not just be applied when you're going out, no. but even in your house, the yes. rays of the sun can come through yes, the walls. Yes, they can come, not through the walls, <laughs> <laughs> but through your windows. So if you have windows or you have open doors, you know, the rays of the sun can come in. See, once the sun is up, just wear sunscreen. Whether or not you're going out. Whether you're going out or not, just wear it. I mean, you do it and then it becomes a habit. Mm. Okay. Finally, before we let you go, what would you what would be some of your top tips and tricks on how to care for our skin? What are some of the things we must always remember? I know you've mentioned water, you've mentioned sunscreen. sunscreen. Okay, now let's get into choosing products. Now there are a hundred thousand products out there. Now before you choose a product, you have to be very cautious because I mean there are lots of tricks and you know cons of getting people to buy because skincare is like it's like the trend now everybody wants great skin so it's very important that you're careful of what you buy we've seen people use different products and you know that's brought about their doom not doom anyways because most of these things can be corrected anyways in the long run but um another tip is um you know be very careful about what you put on your skin very important that's very important be careful of what you put on your skin Maybe some other day I would invite you and we would have a conversation about lightening products because that seems to be a thing now. Yeah. You know, many people want to bleach their skin and mm. it seemed that, you know, people think that brighter skin is assumed or is associated with healthier skin. So when they tell you, when you're looking brighter, people say, ah, you are glowing. Well, there's no, it's not, it's, there's no problem if you're looking brighter. It's a problem if you're looking lighter. There are two different things. Okay. Yes, there are two different things. Be it as me, we can talk about bleaching from now till thy kingdom come. And it shouldn't stop because bleaching is here to stay. I mean, it's something, it's been there before our mothers and it is still here. The problem is the bleaching has gone through different phases. Now there are so many methods of bleaching out the skin. But um, I mean, like I, like I always say, it is your skin. Whatever you want to do with it is your business. I mean, it's your choice. But you have to be informed about the consequences, the pros and cons, what happens when you decide to lighten your skin, what happens when you decide to change the, the melanin production, to subdue the melanin production. We have to let you know what happens, the chances of what can happen. So yeah. you want to give us at least one chance of what can happen? Uh, okay, w one of the most common, okay, let's talk about the most common ingredient for skin lightening is uh, the hydroquinone, which we know about. Hydroquinone for ages has been the gold standard um, ingredient for treating hyperpigmentation. But nowadays we rarely use that. Even in clinic, we only use it for very severe cases. We avoid hydroquinone because of the side effects. Long-term side effects of using hydroquinone um, is um, a skin condition called exogenous ochronosis which is a rather, that is like the most difficult thing to treat <laughs> because you can be treating for two years and you've not made any headway. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Interesting. Very difficult Okay, to maybe this, this conversation of skin lightening you know, will shift it to another day, but at yes, least we've gotten a lot of the tips that we need to you know, maintain our skin and maintain healthier and fresher skin. Now you've said that brighter skin is different from lighter skin. Yes. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so we would, we would, you know, come on your page and get all the tips and tricks. How can people follow you on social media? Um, you can follow the clinic page, Clinic The Aesthetic. Uh, yes, Clinic The Aesthetic. That's the clinic page on Instagram. All right. At Clinic The Aesthetics, you can follow on Instagram. Can people ask personal questions as well there? Yes, you can send us a DM, shoot us a DM, and I actually respond to the DMs myself. Fantastic. So. And this is where we draw the curtain. Thank you so much, Samuel Joseph, for Thank you, us. Olive. Thank you, it's Olive. A pleasure to have had you. To enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.